morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever and whenever you may be listening to this broadcast. I'm Mark Holliday. Welcome to your encouraging word for today. Hey, I just want to drop an encouraging word on you uh, today and um, give you some hope in some certain areas. Many times when I'm challenged with something, going through something, you know, the first thing I do, I go start searching through the word of God, which is the will of God, which are the promises of God. And again, I say this because this makes an individual, you, the child of God, me, it makes us more confident in what God want us to do specifically in carrying it out his will. And when I say his will, I'm talking about his wishes, his desires, and his intentions for your life. There is nothing greater than to know that you're walking in the will, the purpose, and the plan of God. And in doing so, you can walk in confidence. And that's the goal of my message today, real fast, just to encourage you to walk in the will, the purpose, and the plan of God. Do you know provision is in the will of God? I once heard a preacher say one time, and I never forgot this. He said, God, give me everything you have for me. Simply give me your will. And when you ask for God's will, you're asking for his provision. You're asking for your healing. You're asking for your success, your prosperity. You're asking for the protection of your family. You're asking for everything that belongs to you. And if you don't know the will of God, you'll end up doubting God. And one of the worst places to be in is to be in a place of doubt. Then you can't receive from God. Real quickly, I want to run you over to the New Testament. And I want to show you something so you can understand where you stand, knowing that when you doubt God, it's hard to receive from God because you don't know if it's uh, God's best for you. You don't know if God wants to give you something. Uh, you know, and if as you read through the scriptures, you will understand that we have an Old Testament and a New Testament. In today's translation, that's kind of like saying we have an old will and we have a new will. But watch this. Hebrews 8 and 6 says we now have a better will or a better covenant built upon better promises. So we have something that God spoke of in the Old Testament. But when you get to the New Testament, he says, I have something even better for you. And when you understand God has something better for you, you can walk in his plan. You can walk in his purpose. You can walk in the ministry God has for you. You can be a greater witness from God. You can be that city set upon the hill that cannot be healed. Before I read this scripture, let me say this. There's not a more powerful witness and uh, a believer can have than for an unbeliever to see God is with him or her. Meaning this, they see God blessing you. They see God taking you through. They see God is strengthening you even when you're being persecuted, when you're going through a challenge in your body, a challenge in your marriage, a challenge on your job, a challenge with your children, a challenge with anything. When an when someone observes the peace of God on you and the insane See God deliver you out of situation, man, you got it. You got a witness. You have a testimony. So real quickly, let's turn to Matthew, the eighth chapter. I want to read something. And this is the story of a leprous man, a man with a disease. He approached Jesus looking for healing. And if you know anything about leprosy, if you had leprosy in those days, when you were on the street, you had to literally walk down the street and scream out leprosy, leprosy, leprosy to let people know that you were diseased. How embarrassing that must have been. Just imagine walking down the street and someone screaming HIV, HIV, or whatever illness or disease that you have to let people know not to come in contact with you. Well, this individual approached Jesus and asked for a healing, but he was stuck in a particular situation. He was doubting if it was the will of God that he can be healed. And, and, and today's in today's challenge, just imagine if you have an incurable disease or an ailment and a doctor said you're going to have to live with this for the rest of your life. And then you approach God. You already found out what the scientific community have said. Now you're approaching God. And now what is God's will for my life? Is it for me to live for the rest of my life with this? Or can God heal me? Let's find out what Jesus did and what he said in regard to this matter. Matthew, the eighth chapter, starting with the eighth verse. It says, when he was come down from the mountain, speaking of Jesus, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand 
touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Look what it says there. Three things that happened, approximately three things. When this man approached Jesus, first thing he did was worship him. When you're approaching God many times, if you start off worshiping him, you can get your prayer answered. You'd be amazed what happened when you begin to praise someone, compliment someone. Do you know you start drawing that person in, that person in closer and closer to you? When you start praising and worshiping God, you begin to bring God into your presence. In the Old Testament, the scripture says when they dedicated the temple, they began to play on all the instruments. And it says, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. They didn't have to go looking for God. God came looking for them because they began to worship him. Second of all, this man approached Jesus and he said something. He said, if it's your will, If it's your will, Lord, you can make me clean. Here he approached Jesus for healing, but he didn't exactly know if it was God's will. Before Jesus healed him, he had to do something. He had to dispel the doubt in the man's mind. Look at the scripture. It says, Jesus said, I will be thou clean. He said, Lord, If it be your will, Jesus said, it is, I will now be thou made clean. And the scripture says, that's King James version or tone. He says, I will be clean. And the scripture says immediately the man was cleansed from his leprosy. What was possibly stopping this man from receiving his healing or in your case, that breakthrough on the job or that breakthrough in the ministry God has called you to walk in. It might be something in your marriage, your manhood, your womanhood, you know, all the areas. I always talk about. It could be something in your health. It could be whatever God has called you to do. When the will of God is made clear in your life, when doubt is dispersed, things can immediately happen. And you can read on and see what happened. The scripture says, I will, Jesus said, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Here, I'm going to stop right there, but this is what God wants you to do. As you begin to read the word of God, know already that God has done all that he's going to do. All you need to do is receive it. That's right. If God has called you to the ministry to be a burning and a shining light, he has anointed you. He's given you his spirit. He's given all of us the ministry of reconciliation. If he's given you the ministry of giving, if he's given you the ministry of teaching or prophesying, and when I say prophesying, prophetically teaching and preaching the word of God, whatever he's called you to do, once that will is made clear, watch out. You're getting ready to see some breakthroughs. So this is what I want you to do. For the next week, I want you to just start reading. Get a thought, get a designation in your mind and let it be the will of God. And you're going to be asking God, Lord, what is it that you've called me to do? Or God, is it your will that I do this or have this or become this? Watch the scripture start speaking to you and God is going to show you it is my will and be thou whatever it may be in your life, whether it's heal, whether it's ministry, whether it's your marriage, you know, something in your manhood, your womanhood, watch God come through and bring understanding and revelation so you can be a greater witness to him. Before I end this broadcast, I want to always end it with this. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, in Romans the 10th chapter in the verses 9 and 10, it said that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It says with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. When you pray that prayer, simply God, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. God is going to cleanse you from your past, your present, and your future sins. That's based off Colossians 2.13, that God has forgiven you of all of your sins. When God forgives you of all of your sins, God now looks at you as if you've never sinned before. He takes the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He places it on your life. And when God looks at you, he looks at you through the filter of Jesus Christ. He looks at your past. It's completely cleansed. Now you have a new start in God. Now I want you to walk in confidence, walk in the will of God, be blessed of God, and let God fulfill the will, the purpose, and the plan in your life. I'm going to stop right there. I'm Mark Holiday. That's your encouraging word for today. Success is based off the word.